Today I'm going to explain to you what an LVL beam is, how it's used, how it's made, and the weight loads that it can carry. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Deardorff and this is Detroit DIY. Let's get started. LVL lumber stands for laminated veneer lumber. You may have heard that it's similar to the way that plywood is made. And it is similar in the fact that there's many plies here that are glued together. Other than that, that's the only thing that they're the same with. Plywood is laminated in cross grains to give it strength in a downward force and in a racking force. When it comes to the LVL material, all of the grain is laminated together in the same direction and it runs in the same direction as it would a piece of dimensional lumber. The purpose behind the LVL is because when they peel the logs and they laminate these veneers back together, they can remove any of the materials where knots are, where it's just not going to create a strong piece of wood. When they laminate it back together, it's nice, it's clean, it's tight, and it's very strong. In fact, an LVL beam can be one and a half times stronger than its dimensional lumber counterparts. What I'm holding in my hand here is 11 and 7 eighths by 1 and 3 quarters. When you buy dimensional lumber at the lumber yard and it is not a custom order, it is always going to come as 1 and 3 quarter. The reason for that is, is this is used for headers a lot of times and if you use one and a half inch material for headers such as a 2 by 12 then you have to put a piece of half inch plywood in between there to get this to be three and a half inches or the same thickness as the wall. These LVL beams being one and three quarter inches you can double two of them up and that will take up that three and a half inches with no plywood in between them. And it's not that the plywood makes things weaker however if you have the solid material all the way through it is actually stronger. So the LVL is the way to go for headers in most cases especially when you have those larger spans. This particular piece of LVL beam that I'm holding in my hand has 11 veneers. They're about an eighth of an inch thick and when they make these they glue them and then they press them and they heat them and these things are pressed into their dimensions and they're spot on. They are one and three quarters of an inch when they're finished even though sometimes the veneers start and stop. So in some of this like I can see right here and I'll put a picture up and show you this a little bit better where the veneers stop and where veneers start and you can kind of see the same thing right here. This is actually the end of one of the veneers right here and because it's on the outside there's not another one to start so it just leaves this nice little line. However here and on the other side of this veneer is still one and three quarters of an inch. In construction you will rarely ever see a single one and three quarter inch LVL beam anywhere in the house. The only place that you may see a single LVL beam is for stair stringers. In fact that is what I use this for. I just installed a set of stairs and we use the 11 and 7 eighths by 1 and 3 quarter by 14 foot long LVL beams for the stair stringers. There's three of them. It makes the stairs incredibly strong. There's no squeaking, no creaking, no anything. There's no flex in these. And because they are a little bit wider than their dimensional counterpart, where a 2 by 12 is 11 and a quarter, these are a true 11 and 7 eighths. So there's more material left once you cut your rise and your tread out of your stair stringer. So when it comes to the home remodels that you see where everybody wants that open floor space, most of the time when there is a load bearing wall and a beam needs to be put into its place, LVL beams are used. They're never used single. They're used either double, triple, or even quadruple to carry the load. It's rule of thumb that the LVL beam's width should be one quarter to one third of its depth. If you are a DIYer and you are thinking about removing a load bearing wall, it would be in your best interest to hire an engineer to come in, assess the weight loads, and tell you exactly what you need to put in place as far as an LVL beam is concerned. However, there are some load specs on these beams. 
contractors have been on a lot of jobs and they've seen a lot of these beams go in. They've seen what the engineers do and they have a really good idea of what should go there to support the load. However, as a contractor myself, I will not walk into someone's home and tell them that this is going to adequately carry the load. Especially when snow loads are involved or other loads like that, multiple stories, staircases over the top, so on and so forth. The saying that more is better than not enough isn't always the case. So what you want to do is you definitely want to bring an engineer, assess the loads and have them design what needs to go there. When it comes to LVL beams, they can be referred to as 1-ply, 2-ply, 3-ply, 4-ply, and so on. And what they mean by that is that each 1 and 3 quarter inch board is considered a ply. This thickness is 1-ply. If we double that up, we now have 2-plies. These beams are sometimes used three, four, maybe even five of them stacked together. Sometimes these beams are special ordered for that particular job. So it's gonna come all in one piece. These beams can be made 40, 60, sometimes even 80 feet long to carry the entire load of that span. There are no supporting posts. That's what's so incredible about these and the way that they're made and laminated together that they are super strong. Rule of thumb is that a double or a two ply 11 and 7 eighths LVL beam can span 20 feet. Sometimes even though these specs exist, it doesn't mean that there isn't an exceptional load or more load than what would necessarily be there. But it is a general rule of thumb that two of these can span 20 feet and handle the job well. In the description of this video, I'll put a link to an article that goes over spans and a lot of other material on these LVL beams that could be very helpful for you choosing what you need to do. If you're spanning much more than 16 feet, a header or for a glass sliding door or a big sheet of glass or something like that on an exterior wall, then you could probably get away with a typical header style LVL beam across that opening and be just fine. But when it comes to interior walls where loads can be varying or there can be several load points on one single wall, this is where you really need to get that engineer to step in. So the advantages of using the LVL beam are one that we already talked about, their incredible strength. Two is the fact that they can span such large distances without any supporting beams. Three, they're fairly easy to get. You can pick these up. Menards has a pretty decent lineup of them. You don't really see them at Home Depot or Lowe's. Number four, they're fairly lightweight when being compared to their dimensional counterparts. There are some disadvantages to using LVL lumber. And one of them being is this material is very hard. So it's pretty hard to get a nail into it because of the way that the glue and the way it's veneered and been pressed so tight together that when you go to put nails in them, they're, they're a little bit rugged to get a nail into. Another disadvantage of LVL beams is their interior use only. And the reason for that is, is they are fairly water resistant, but what can happen is if water gets up against them and it manages to work its way in a little bit, it becomes trapped it doesn't breathe kind of like a dimensional piece of lumber would breathe and it can cause these to rot faster than a dimensional piece of lumber would because it literally locks onto the moisture and it just won't expel it the best way to put it is a dimensional piece of lumber kind of works like a sponge when it comes to moisture moisture can get into it and moisture can get out of it therefore it doesn't affect it so much on wet dry cycles that may happen to it. The LVL beam, that is a whole different story. Wet dry cycles like that won't really be a cycle. It'll be wet and it'll just kind of trap it in here and stay wet. So it, it, you have to make sure that these do not get wet and that the home is sealed well, especially in exterior wall applications such as headers and so on and so forth over the tops of windows. That needs to be sealed very well to get the expected lifespan out of this material. 
which is forever if it doesn't get wet. So when it comes to your next home improvement project, look into these LVL beams for covering those large spans. They are a little bit expensive. A 14 foot 11 and 7 8 by 1 and 3 quarter inch LVL beam is going to run you 85 to 90 dollars somewhere in that neighborhood which is way more than a piece of dimensional lumber but once again these can span much greater distances and they are much stronger they do suffer from some of the same things that affect dimensional lumber meaning that under load these do have some sag to them just like dimensional lumber would the deflection in these LVL beams is less than what you would have in dimensional lumber but there is some there once the load gets put on and no matter what lumber you use over span there's always some deflection just nothing that you can do about that when it comes to the long spans however keep in mind it's not so much deflection that you're even going to notice it with the naked eye so just for an example of cost using the LVL beams for the stringers and the stairs I just installed oak treads and Luon for the risers. Luon is very paintable and even though it's a thin material it's very paintable and it has a nice grade finish on it. The total cost of that start to finish was $680. Not a terrible investment for a nice set of stairs that are going to be super strong and they will never squeak, sag, bow, creak or do anything like that. They are there. Alright guys that's all we got for this time. I hope this information has helped you out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section and I will gladly answer them. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider doing so. And remember to always respect the power of your power tools. We'll see you soon.